Hello everyone, welcome to this short video uh, session. I would like to inform you the main agenda of this short session is to brief our patients on how they should take themselves, take care of themselves as their responsibility. Remember that their health is your responsibility. So just to go straight, I think it's common knowledge that HIV infection is a retroviral disease that has no cure at the moment. Yeah? When somebody tests HIV positive, it doesn't mean that the person is sentenced to death. So testing HIV positive is not a life, uh, is not a death sentence. So having said that, uh, when all patients or patients that test positive are referred to us, our first and main objective is to try to get the understanding of the patient. How much does the patient understand concerning their condition? From there, we now pick it from there and fill the gaps that the patient really needs to know. So we'll, we'll take the patient through the HIV uh, replication cycle. For example, it is imperative for the patient to know how HIV uh, life cycle is. For example, what happens after immediately being um, when one is uh, diagnosed to have HIV. HIV on entering the immune system, HIV goes into the system and denatures or rather kills the CD4 cells that are responsible for the immunity of the body. Therefore, it is important to note that at this point, the body goes without proper mechanisms to, pre to, pre to prevent it from becoming unhealthy. So anybody testing positive should know from the word go that the immune system is compromised once they are tested to be positive. So what happened next? What happened next? So it is important that after testing positive and after being taken through the sessions by the counselor, it is important for the patient to note that to assist the body to maintain its health ways of normal physiological processes, there must be an intervention. And the intervention at this point is actually taking medication. There are two types of medication that the patients should be aware of. Number one, we give them prophylaxis. And this prophylaxis is cotrimoxazole prophylaxis. Why is it given? Cotrimoxazole prophylaxis, according to WHO, present, prevents opportunistic infections. This is to say, once a patient is diagnosed and put on prophylaxis, we anticipate that they will be protected against skin infection, diarrheal diseases, bacterial chest infections, and uh, brain infections like toxoplasmosis. Yeah? So uh, when after testing and put on prophylaxis, so it is imperative for the patient to take these drugs lifelong. So during the interaction, the patient should be aware. And this is to my viewers that you should be aware of why take cotrimoxazole for life. It is for the preventive purposes of opportunistic infections. After a patient is put on cotrimoxazole prophylaxis, there, there is another session that follows. We'll have to ensure that the lab works are done. Yeah? These are the liver function tests, the renal function tests, and ensure the patient has got an hemoglobin level that is acceptable to start this long-life medication. And it should come from the patient that they are aware of their condition. They should be aware of their condition. Because this is lifelong medication, and this, they are expected to take drugs on a daily basis without missing or skipping their pills. Therefore, after these sessions are done to prepare a patient to start on antiretroviral, we actually call it a treatment preparation seminar. The patient is taken through all the do's and don'ts as they take medication. The patient is expected by the end of the session to be aware of what is going on in terms of their immunity once they are tested positive. Number two, what goes on when somebody is not on medication? Number three, 
what goes on when somebody takes medication as prescribed, and what are the side effects expected on starting antiretrovirals. So this, all this thing is actually geared or tailored to make the patient understand all these small, uh, all these entities to enable them understand as to why they should take their medication as prescribed. So after the sessions, the patient is put on antiretrovirals, and after putting them on antiretrovirals, you expect the patient to take the drugs wholly and timely to ensure that they are, they are, the drugs achieve their potency or their, rather their therapeutic function in denaturing or rather containing the replication of the virus. That is the most, uh, that is the most fundamental issue, is to ensure that the patient suppress their viral load, their viral loads, and ensure that they are healthy as they take their drugs. So the issues of adherence will now come in very handy, and my colleagues will be talking about adherence as we proceed with this tele, uh, te telecast. Just to mention, uh, it's also important or rather imperative for the patient to know why they are taking drugs and the reason behind antiretrovirals. So it is important for the patient to know their drugs by name. My colleague will be talking more about adherence. Adherence does not only mean taking drugs as prescribed. It also means that the patient adheres to clinic appointments, the patient is able to know their drugs by name, the patient is able to ensure that they practice all that entails uh, their management. For example, use protection to avoid acquiring uh, extra strains of HIV. So this is something that is wholesome and I believe this information that is, is passed to, to make to enable the patient or my viewers understand in totality what goes on during this delicate time as you are trying to put this patient on medication and see to it that they are responding immunologically by their CD4 rising and they are suppressing their viral loads to a minimal level. By the way, uh, according to WHO, a patient who is started on medication, it should be six months down the line on their treatment, they should be undetectable virologically. That is the gold standard. And I believe once uh, somebody understands that suppressing the virus has got to do more with them than the caregiver or the professional caregiver, we just guide them to see to it that they accomplish all that we expect of them. So thank you very much. Uh, we'll be discussing more about this and my colleagues will also be enlightening us on the various issues that entail their management. Yeah, thank you. Hello, I'd like to welcome you to this part, this video, where we talk about the counseling department. As an introduction, I would like us to evaluate and see what counseling is all about. Counseling basically is assisting a client and guiding the client to be able to digest their own condition, understand it, and eventually make informed decisions about the way forward concerning their own condition. Therefore, it is not necessarily giving the patient a lot of advice such that the client is supposed to do what the clinician wants. But it is, on the other hand, a way of helping the client make informed decisions about their own condition and definitely mapping a way forward that will be able to assist them and they are well to their treatment. Therefore, in the counseling department, we have a wide range of services. We have the initial counseling, but we also could also double up as the follow-up counseling. We also have ongoing counseling. We have disclosure. We also have pre-test, the testing, and the post-test for the spouses and the partners that have been traced. We also have psychosocial counseling, and we also have the kids club. Those are the main activities that happen in the counseling department. So as a quick overview about each of these services, when we talk about the initial counseling, 
This happens immediately after the patient has just been tested. Then they come into the clinic and the counselor takes them through a process of digesting and air, the patient is allowed to air their views and their reactions towards what has just happened. The new status that they have just been, has just kind of been disclosed to them about or they've realized about their new condition. Therefore, this happens immediately after the patient has been tested. It could happen a day or probably a two days after, but immediately after the patient has been tested. All right. We, after that, the patient is booked for the ongoing counseling. Ongoing counseling, a patient is given a week or two where during this period, the patient is supposed to disclose, is expected to disclose to the spouse or to the family. Also, the patient is supposed to have made arrangements with the community team, especially about home visits, where the patient has been visited and this facilitates, facilitates easy follow-up and monitoring of the patient. We also have disclosure as a process and it is guided also by the counsellor. Disclosure is emphasised a lot during the ongoing counselling and also partly in the initial counselling or the follow-up counselling. Disclosure involves a patient is telling a person who is next to them, probably a spouse or a partner or a family member or even a friend, about their condition. This helps them to gain a treatment body from the person that has been disclosed. This assists the patient to have an easier time to deal with their medication and their treatment plans. Also, disclosure is guided by the counsellor and this kind of disclosure is a bit sensitive because it happens also to children who were born to HIV positive mothers and they've grown up not knowing about their condition. But at some point in their life, as they approach puberty or, or adolescence, then the counselor guides or assists the parent or the guardian to disclose the status of the, that child to the very child. This helps the child to take the treatment as their own responsibility and they start learning elements of appearance from as early as tender ages, as early puberty of their about. The next is about the pre-test, the testing and the post-test counseling. This happens especially to partners that have been traced. For instance, if a wife is the one to be has been tested first, probably during the antenatal clinics, screening or thereabout, then this partner has the responsibility to approach the other partner and to disclose the situation or the status to them. And then that partner now comes to the clinic for testing. That is when we talk about the pre-test counseling and the testing and the post-test counseling because this particular client needs to have pre-test counseling and then the testing itself, and then the post-test counseling. This uh, helps to uh, establish good adherence for the initial partner, and of course, also to start to prepare this new partner also, or rather this new client for treatment as early as possible. We also have psychosocial counseling. Psychosocial counseling uh, is given to those clients who in the course of treatment they develop or they uh, meet different challenges. Some lose family along the way, some lose uh, jobs due to incapacitation following uh, being bedridden for a long time. Uh, some even natural tragedies like floods and things like that. Therefore, psychosocial counseling empowers this patient with the skills to be able to not only deal 
with their current situation, but prepare and for uh, the future situations and to have an optimistic attitude towards their own life. This goes a long way to establish and to build appearance, good elements of appearance to this patient. Because if a patient has given up in life, then it becomes very hard for them to adhere very well to their treatment. But if the patient is still optimistic about life, then they are able to follow the treatment plans in a good way. Finally, we have Kids Club. Kids Club is a support group that focuses mainly on families, especially the children and their parents of all school-going ages, right from uh, infants all the way to uh, high school-going ages, like the adolescents. Therefore, this is a quarterly event where every so often, quarterly, we have the counselors and the whole clinical team but mainly guided by the counselors and the community team coming together and organizing an occasion, a whole day series of events in a whole day where children are divided into different groups and they're given advice, they are allowed to air their views about how they view education and treatment plans, how they handle different situations in life like schooling, and different uh, socio-cultural issues like where they live and how they